Hello everyone. I meant to do a live webinar here day after tomorrow on data analytics and evidence-based decision making and how we can apply quantitative methodologies to decision making in business. But unfortunately with the coronavirus scare and lockdown and my particular job responsibilities, uh, my life has gotten a lot busier lately and I'm not going to be able to do that webinar anymore. So what I thought I'd do instead is just send out this brief video about what I think is one of the most exciting things, which is how to actually get into data science for the first time or data analytics if you haven't been involved in it before. Now there's a whole bunch of self-help stuff out there. And if you just Google how to get into data science or how to learn data science or analytics, you're gonna be barraged with resources, fantastic resources from a ton of different sites. So what I'd like to do in this brief video is talk about some of those resources particularly or specifically but more generally, I'd like to kind of help you create some kind of a mental framework that you can use to guide your learning as you get into this field. I got into data science a few years ago, a little over three years ago now, uh, and I went from basically having no quantitative background at all to knowing how to code in a number of programming languages and having learned linear algebra and multivariate calc and statistics and probability and a lot of the deeper math behind things like neural networks and random forests and regressions and all that kind of thing. So I've been through a good part of this learning curve and to the extent that it's possible, I'd like to facilitate that for you. So without further ado, I'm going to switch over to my slides here. All right. So first and foremost, you'll probably see this if you do my aforementioned Google search, right? You'll see this data science Venn diagram. It consists of three parts. The first one is mathematics, right? So obviously to do data science, you have to be savvy on the math. The next thing you're going to need is some computer science ability. You're going to need to know how to code and you're going to need to understand sort of how computers work, how data is stored and manipulated, and how the algorithms themselves work that enable you to do the high-speed fancy stuff. Now that high-speed fancy stuff is machine learning, right? And when most people think data science, they typically think machine learning. You know, neural networks, random forest, decision trees, KNN, classifiers, whatever various algorithms that use advanced mathematics and code to find the underlying patterns in, in big sets of data. Now, the third piece that isn't talked about as much is the importance of domain expertise. So this is something that you probably bring to, to the fight that you didn't even necessarily realize was part of data science, but it's incredibly important. Now, this is where I started out, right? When I started doing data stuff for the first time, I had tons of domain expertise. I had 12 years of experience in my career field. I lacked some, not all, but most of the mathematical knowledge I needed, and I had no computer science knowledge at all. But the domain expertise, without it, you can't do anything. So that person coming fresh out of college with the math and the CS is still missing a huge part of what it takes to be an effective data scientist. Now, the overlapping sections here between computer science and domain expertise is data processing, right? This is where we apply the use of code and computers to handle, harvest the data that we need to actually do our, you know, do our research. The intersection between domain expertise and mathematics is more formal statistical quantitative research, right? This is like real science. Right? You have a problem and you apply mathematics, statistical models, whatever it may be, to try and unearth some insights about the issues that you're facing. Now at the intersection of all three of our little circles here in the middle of our Venn diagram, we have data science. And so, you know, this, you'll see a lot of different versions of this Venn diagram floating out on the web. It was initially proposed by Hillary Mason a good number of years ago now. But the bottom, the bottom line here really is that there's three big broad areas of knowledge that you need to develop if you really want to get into analytics. One of them is domain expertise, which like I said, you probably already have. Uh, and the other two are the mathematics and the computer science. And you can't do without any one of the three. If you have no domain expertise, you have nothing to apply the math and the computer science to. If you've got no computer science ability, you have no ability to ingest and clean and prepare data and actually run the algorithms. If you have no mathematical understanding, then you're not going to understand the models that you're using when you, you know, bring them up in code and you won't understand how to prepare the data to be adequately modeled and you won't really understand the outputs of your models. You won't understand whether they're actually measuring the things that are important to you. 
Now, before you dive off of that cliff directly into starting to learn data science, it's important to understand how we as adults actually learn. Now, there's four principles of andragogy. These go back to the 1980s and Malcolm Knowles. The first is that adult learners are need to be involved. You need to be involved in the planning and evaluation of your own instruction. The experience, including the mistakes that you make while you're learning, provide the basis for your learning activities. What you're learning needs to be relevant, right? We're not going out there and learning this stuff for fun, generally speaking, or just because it's part of some curriculum, right? If you're going out there and spending your own time and your own money to learn this stuff, it needs to have some relevance and impact. And this is a hurdle that you've already crossed. If you're interested in learning machine learning, data science, you're doing it because you think it's going to have some kind of relevant impact. You've already made that, that kind of value-driven decision in your own life. And lastly, adult learning needs to be problem-centered rather than content-oriented. What I mean by that is, you know, if I'm teaching calculus and I'm focusing all my time on teaching, you know, derivatives, that's great and everything. I learn the theory. But for me personally, like I'll, I'll just speak for myself personally, when I got back into learning calculus, what made it really relevant to me is that I wanted to understand how the gradient descent algorithms were doing what they did. And I knew that I had to understand multivariate calculus and derivatives within that context. You know, same thing for integrals. Integrals gave me the ability to understand the probability that undergirded the machine learning models I was using. So by coming back to the math from a more practical you know, I have a specific problem to solve kind of standpoint. Uh, I was able to understand what I was learning a lot better and ultimately retain it longer. So here's my two cents. All right. And I'm just going to speak from my own experience here. For me, this is what worked to get me from where I was knowing nothing to where I am now fairly confident. All right. The first thing is you need some sort of a progressive step-by-step -step introduction that gets you from wherever you are right now to actually doing projects quickly so that you can start making mistakes. It's super important that, that you get to the point as soon as possible where you're actually doing projects. Even if you don't fully understand what you're doing or why they work, it's important that you start doing projects so you can start making mistakes and having the experience of success of running that first model and saying, wow, you know, like I can really do this, which is a an amazing feeling and very motivational to keep you in the game. Uh, secondly, I think it's really important as you're going through that structured curriculum to periodically break away and go do side projects on your own. Again, that gives you opportunities to fail. It gives you that motivation. It comes from getting something right. And it exposes you to the kind of real world messiness of data science that no course can really kind of adequately convey. Uh, and the third thing is, you know, from a practical perspective, ideally, it needs to be fairly quick and it needs to be fairly inexpensive and it needs to be on your budget, right? So all the resources I'm about to show you on the internet, they, they meet those criteria, right? The courses are short. They're easy to, you know, they're not necessarily easy material, but the courses themselves are not super time intensive. They're not super expensive and they teach you what you need to know and nothing else. And then they leave you free to go on to the next course to learn, you know, and continue to expand your knowledge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you through kind of a few of my favorite sites. Right, so we'll put away my, my PowerPoint here. All right, so first up, DataCamp. I love DataCamp. DataCamp is where I got started, all right? Go to datacamp.com, pay uh, pay for a subscription. It'd be about I think thirty bucks a month. Uh, one great thing about DataCamp is you know I've gone through a ton of courses in DataCamp. You see I've completed twenty nine of them. That represents well over a hundred hours on this platform, just learning on this platform. I've got a few in progress that I'm temporarily not working on, and you can see I'm work I'm looking at supply chain analytics, uh, statistical simulation, doing a little. I was playing around with this linear algebra for data science in our course. Uh, sometimes I start these, I don't finish them just because I'm curious to see what they kind of provide. So some nice things about this, and this goes back to that kind of progressive curriculum I was talking about. Beautiful thing here is you can come over here to the side and you can choose you, these tracks, right? So I can pick a career track. I can pick the language I'm interested in. So for me, it's always Python, although I have learned R, but I'm interested in Python. And then I can pick what I want to do. Uh, 
you'll see, so I actually finished older versions of these, but they've been upgraded, so I restarted them. Uh, the da data scientist one, I actually used to hold the certificate in that, but then they added a bunch of courses, so now I'm redoing it. But, you know, let's say I want to learn data science or I want to become a data analyst. Uh, I have all these all these options here, right? Or here's a simple one, machine learning for everyone. 29 courses, it's a big one, 115 hours. Interested in that, we can learn more. Little load. And then we can look at what we've got here, right? So got a no code introduction to machine learning an introduction to Python. So first of all, they teach you how to code and then they start teaching you data science toolbox stuff, which is these courses are all about learning how to write uh, functions and stuff, more advanced coding start doing a little statistics, and then right away you start getting into actually building models with scikit-learn, doing unsupervised learning, various types of classifiers, and on and on and on, all kinds of different stuff, right? And the beautiful thing about this, like I said, is you're doing projects right off the bat, right? They give you a data set, and you're actually doing projects, which is amazing. What I like to do, I've been through data analyst and data scientist and a couple other ones from beginning to end on this platform, and what I like to do is I'll do a couple courses and then I'll step away and I'll go do a project on my own. So maybe I'll do a project where I scrape a bunch of uh, data off the web and I build some kind of project and I'll make a bunch of mistakes and it'll be tough but when I get through it I'll have really nailed down whatever it is I just learned on DataCamp and then I'll be able to come back to that next series of courses with that deeper understanding of what I'm doing. You can also do the skills tracks. Same thing I'll go to Python here because I, I like Python. And you can see there's a bunch of shorter tracks here where you're just learning something specific like how to import and clean data, manipulate data, do time series analysis. This is a cool one I want to do. Um, there's a bunch of really neat ones on here I haven't done yet, so I'll be back here. And you can see they're starting to get more of the domain-specific stuff, so I'm sure People Analytics will be on here at some point. They have some individual courses along those lines. they got Marketing Analytics, and then you can also look at individual courses. So let's just say I'll go to Python. I'll say I want to look at People Analytics. Let's see what they got. I did a uh, Python course in this. We'll see if it shows up. So, but there's HR Analytics here in R, which is another language. Survival Analysis, which I've used for People Analytics before, which is awesome in R. You can also do it in Python. Bunch of cool stuff. All right. So that's pretty much that for DataCamp. Big fan of DataCamp. You should definitely take a look at it. It also has the option of doing it for businesses or for schools where you can do it for groups of people, but if that's something you're interested in, you can look at that on your own. So, next one I really like is Coursera. All right, so Coursera, I've done a bunch of stuff on. Coursera is where I go, DataCamp is where I go to learn how to code and how to practically do stuff. Coursera is where I like to go to learn the math, right? To learn how to actually use the math at a deep level, right? So I've done some regression model stuff deep into the math, that's in R. Uh, did a specialization in statistics, which is super beneficial. I've done a bunch of individual courses that aren't showing up here. Uh, I've done some a bunch of machine learning uh, mathematics type courses in here. But if you're interested, you know, they actually offer master's degrees here that you can do, which is amazing, right? Here's a master of science in machine learning from Imperial College London, which is where I did my math, uh, mathematics for machine learning course online, which is great curriculum. You can do stuff in computer science. Here's an MS in data science from the University of Colorado Boulder. Very cool stuff, right? You can see just right here under data science, I've got 425 courses just in the data science category alone. Uh, and you can browse through those to your heart's content. Uh, some of these like this IBM data science certificate, that's the real deal. You go through that, I think it's 10 courses and you actually get the professional certificate from IBM. So pretty neat stuff. All right, next up, look at edX. The only course I've done on edX is a linear algebra course, which is really good. Uh, but they have a ton of stuff on here, right? Uh, and they also offer master's degrees and all kinds of cool stuff. They actually offer what I think is probably the most inexpensive master's degree, one of the highest quality master's degrees you could really ask for. Uh, let's see if we find it here. So we've got online master's programs. It's from uh, Georgia Tech. So they, they actually offer a mass an MS in uh, data analytics on here, which is just phenomenal. 
along with these professional certificate programs, which are really cool. This is this is almost famous as introduction to Python programming has been really high quality. Here's their master's degree in analytics. This entire MS from one of the top 10 ranked programs in the United States is 10,000 bucks for 11 courses, can do it in a year. Amazing, amazing thing. So something to think about. All right, so there's edX, another great place to learn to code, to learn the deeper math if you really want to learn the mathematics. For just the coding side of things, Pluralsight is amazing. So Pluralsight.com. Uh, this is where you can go if you want to get really, really smart on an individual programming language. So I've done a little bit of stuff on Python here, but you have tons of options, as you can see. You know, it's, again, 30 bucks a month, and you can see that I don't have a paid subscription right now. That's because with this and DataCamp and a lot of the other ones, you can either... You can pause your subscription. So when you're not actively doing courses, you just pause your subscription. It saves all your course progress and stuff, and then you can come back later and do more work. So let's just type in data science. Let's see what they give us. Go to courses. And, well, doesn't want to respond. Here we go. So a bunch of data science stuff. Look at all that. Tons of courses. And of course they have these actual paths, right? So there's a bunch of Microsoft stuff here, which is pretty neat. Um, there's a Python specific data interpretation course, three courses, seven hours. Uh, and then another thing that's kind of cool is you can actually test yourself to see how good you are. So you can test yourself before you take the course to see if you really need it. Um, and then you can test yourself afterwards to see if you actually learned anything, which is a very cool feature in my opinion. All right, so that's Pluralsight. Now Kaggle, good old Kaggle.com. Now, Kaggle's pretty neat. Kaggle is a home for machine learning competitions. That's what it started out as. So you can go on here and you can see the amount of money some of these have available. You know, if you compete and win this deep fake detection challenge, there's a million dollars in prize money up uh, for grabs. This is uh, owned by Google. Google acquired Kaggle a year or two ago. I'm not sure how long. Very cool stuff. Tons of money available here. And then, you know, you can see they do local or uh, things of recent interest. I got a couple of COVID-19 challenges on here. Very cool stuff. Now you can come here once you've once you've logged in and got an account as you can see that I do, which is free by the way. You can come down here to courses and there's a bunch of courses on here. Now I haven't done any of them. I opened up this intro to machine learning course just out of curiosity but I haven't really done any training through here. Um, I expect it's probably good stuff. I mean it is owned by Google now and they are the you know they are world leaders in data science and analytics so some some good possibilities here if this is something you're interested in getting into you know a beautiful thing about Kaggle is Kaggle's free I don't believe the courses cost anything either although I'm not sure about that so don't hold me to it but uh, I don't pay anything to be in Kaggle and you know these are just available for me to look at so I believe they might be free as well all right LinkedIn learning lastly so here we are on LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn quite a bit, so I got all kinds of notifications. But uh, if you come up here to the right, look at their additional apps, you come to learning, you open that guy up, and lots and lots of options here. So, uh, you know, if I want to browse by subject here, I could say, hmm, maybe business analysis. Maybe I'm interested in Google Analytics specifically. I'm just going to type in data science to see what comes up. It says 480 course results, pretty good. There's almost 1,200 results here for data science. Tons of stuff, lots of videos, bunch of courses. There's 32 learning paths. Let's take a look at those. Look at all this. Become a data scientist, that's 17 hours of instruction. Master Python for data science, that's 24 hours. Lots of stuff here. You could probably get a solid start just here on LinkedIn Learning. And again, this one, like Kaggle, I haven't actually used myself, but definitely worth worth a look as you're evaluating your options. All right, folks, well, that's it. This one a little longer than I expected to, but I hope it was worth it to you. If you have any questions, you can feel free to drop a comment on the YouTube channel or look me up, uh, James Tollefson on LinkedIn or Facebook or at Lupine Insights on Twitter. So until next time, thanks for tuning in.